Hello everybody, welcome to another career sim on National Hockey League 23. Today I am taking two identical players in every single way other than their last name and throwing them into the NHL to see how similar or different their career paths are. Will they be close in terms of overall career points? Will they have similar achievements? Will they retire at the same time, different times? It's all gonna be found out here today. I'm also interested to find out if they end up sharing a team. You never know, it could happen, especially later on in the simulation when they start to drop in overall. Let's jump in and find out. So here we go, we've got two twins, Jabroni1 and Jabroni2, who are expected to go over Connor Bedard. It's just the way it is, you know? Sometimes she goes, sometimes she doesn't go. The Flyers get the first overall pick, they take JBO, and then the Ducks will take JBT as their pick. Bedard goes third to the Red Wings, biggest steal of the draft. Already we see some separation. A lot of S's going on there. Jabroni 1 puts up 23 points, but he stays at 75 overall, whereas Jabroni 2 puts up 12 points and goes up to a 78. Someone riddle me that. JBO plays for the Lay Valley Phantoms in year one of his career. Hopefully I pronounced that right. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. But JBT on the first line with Zegris and Terry. So already, we are seeing two completely different career trajectories. What a word. Alright, just pulled that one out of nowhere. That's the rabbit out of the hat. We do see 58 points in 72 games in the AHL from Jabroni1. But he is big time overshadowed by a second placed Pacific team that JBT was playing for. And wait, I got... Some crazy information for you. The Mighty Ducks of Anaheim went all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals and lost in seven. What a heartbreaking first year, but also what an exhilarating start. One joining the main roster at 83 overall, going to be playing with Couturier and Konechny. Nothing changes for two. Zegris and Terry will be his wingers, and both teams narrowly miss out on a playoff spot. And I mean narrowly. Not a great first season for one. Dash 9 and 34 points in 80 games. Two is certainly having some more success early on here. 73 points. Played the full 82. We have Patrick Kane joining the first line for the Flyers this season. And Mason McTavish has been promoted to the first line for the Mighty Ducks. Both teams miss out on a playoff spot this year. But the Flyers definitely had some more success. So after that roaring start... From Jabroni 2, the falloff appears to be pretty dramatic. But at least he had that run. Jabroni 1 doesn't really have much to show for his career so far. Frost and Tippett join the first line for the Flyers. Whereas 2 is playing with Zegris and Bobby Jacuizzi. You have got to be kidding me with that name. A new deal is signed with the Ducks. Two years at 9.5 million. The Flyers are struggling continuously here. The Ducks get 100 points. Finished second in the Pacific Division. And we see 70 points from Jabroni1. So he's trying to carry that team a little bit. Only got one point less than Jabroni2. I'm really starting to think I should have gave them different names. As fun as it is to say Jabroni1 and Jabroni2, I'm not down anymore. I'm already sick of it. So I'm going to try to just call them 1 and 2 as much as possible. But in some situations, it might just not really make sense. A new contract is signed. With the Philadelphia Flyers for JBO, I already broke my own rule. 12.8 over 6 years. They still can't make it into the playoffs this season. Whereas the Ducks finish first in the Pacific. 103 points. After 77 games, 1 puts up 55 points. Whereas 2 played the full 82 and had 77. So he put up the same amount of points as Jabroni 1 had games played. Just a fun little stat there for you. Occasionally, I will go over the full roster just so we can see what the entire team looks like as opposed to simply peering at the offense. A big contract is signed here. 13.3 for the next seven. He is locked in with the Ducks. The Flyers finally make it back into the playoffs. 90 points, finishing third in the Metropolitan, whereas the Ducks finish first in the Pacific with 104. Great season out of both of these guys. Honestly, I expected some higher point production from two high franchise snipers, but that's just me. The Ducks lose in round two and the Flyers lose in round one. So once again, two is getting the upper hand. 
quick playoff stat update here, which I mean, I don't really see as important, but some people like to see it progressively because I show the entire thing at the end anyway. But yeah, just for those that want to see the playoff stat updates, there you go. Flyers narrowly missing out on a playoff spot, whereas the Ducks will find themselves in the postseason yet again with 99 points on the season, 45 wins. Jabroni One only played 67 games and had 50 points. Another 77 point season from two. So clearly having a better time than one, but also not great in the playoffs. First round exit to the Seattle Kraken. Frost and Yams gonna be on the first line of the Philadelphia Flyers kata hat in net. We have Bobby Jacuisi who's now up to a 92 overall playing with McTavish and two. Jakey O in net for the Ducks. They finished with 85 points. Once again, narrowly missing the playoffs. They seem to love doing that. The Flyers had a miserable season. They finished eighth in the Metro. Jabroni One had 56 points through the full 82 games. No injury troubles this year. Whereas Two had a point a game year. So that is an individual milestone, but I'm sure that Two wants to get that Stanley Cup and I'm sure that his sights are set on it. The Flyers don't really have a real chance yet. Still doing poorly in the Metropolitan. They moved up one spot though to finish seventh instead of eighth. The Ducks are in the postseason once more. 64 points from Jabroni 1 and 85 from Jabroni 2. So another great season. The Ducks would make it all the way to the conference finals where they would fall short to the Minnesota Wild. Both teams have made some changes over the last few years, have updated quite a bit. Some players retiring maybe, trades, contracts, stuff like that. But it's always fascinating to me, deep into the simulation, how I feel like the overall drops off big time. It's sort of standard to have below 80 overall players on your team. And it's also standard to have players that are low 80s to high 70s that have X factors. It's very strange. But anyway, the Ducks once again losing in the first round. Jabroni One decides to move on from the Flyers, joins the Capitals on a long deal, $14 million dollars for the next seven. I think it was a good time for one to jump ship because the Flyers just were not getting it done. Lack of success year after year, and the Capitals appear to have a pretty good roster. So I think that that will be the uphill swing that Jabroni One needed. Both teams do miss out on the playoffs, but they finished fourth in their respective divisions, so it wasn't a horrible season. The weird thing is, one played 53 games and two played 51, so there's some kind of like twin telepathy thing going on right here. Iserman and Langdon going to be playing on the first line of the Washington Capitals. Jacuisi and Rodney at 78 overall. The Washington Capitals win the President's Trophy. So this is probably the first time that one has had any bragging rights over two. Especially because the Ducks finished last in the Pacific Division. That's a rough go. Quick playoff stat update here for Mr. One who had 10 points in 13 games played, whereas two had 68 points in 73 games, would not get any playoff action this season, and the Capitals were eliminated by the Isles in round number two, taking six games. After just one bad season with the Ducks, two decides to hit him with the deuces, heads to Sunrise, Florida. Gonna be on a one-year deal worth $10 million. I got Spencer Knight in net, still at 87 overall. Both teams do make it into the playoffs. We got 98 points from the Capitals, good enough for fourth in the Metro, whereas the Panthers put up 102, and that will sit them second in the Atlantic. We get a nice amount of points from Jabroni One, who played all 82 games. We get a career high from Two, who had 87 points. Both teams failed to make it out of the first round, and it is definitely worth mentioning that the Flyers are the team to eliminate the Washington Capitals. You can't make this up. Jabroni One. Very upset about that, I can only imagine. Devastating loss to his former team. Two decides to jump ship again, joins the Islanders who are pulling the 2BC special over here with all the abilities. Another one year deal, 10.5 million. They have a solid looking roster, I gotta say. There you go, 77 overall goalie with two abilities. Both teams are in the Metro and would finish first and second respectively, 111 and 104 points. We see 66 with 28 goals this year from JBO, whereas JBT had 85 points, 28 goals, so they tied there at least, but definitely had more in the PTS category. The Islanders would be the only team to make it out of the first round, 
but they wouldn't make it past the second. A lot of abilities going on here in Washington as well. We are now in year 16, so the players are starting to get a little bit older. Not in general terms, but in hockey terms. And we see another ship jumping from two. Stays in the Metropolitan, but will be playing for the New York Rangers this time around. Signs another one-year deal worth 10.7, and they would finish one spot lower than the Capitals, but 25 points less. So Washington definitely had a better season and kind of just got finessed out of a playoff spot. One had 63 points this season, whereas Jabroni 2 was able to put up 71, even though his team was a lot less successful. So maybe Jabroni 1 turned into more of a defensive sniper, if that's even a thing. I have no idea. I'm going to go ahead and say that it is. 2 continues to be a suitcase, leaving the Metropolitan Division this year to join the Pacific. With the Seattle Kraken playing with Shane Wright and Dalton on the first line. Looks like they could be good. Finally showing some loyalty, signing a two-year deal worth $12.5 Not a big deal. The defense for the Kraken looking extremely questionable, but they do got a good goalie. Washington makes the playoffs with 96 points. They finish third in the Metro, whereas the Kraken would go on to win a President's Trophy. So there was one bragging right that JBO had over JBT that he no longer does. You can't slap that President's Trophy card on the table any longer because it has been achieved by two and the Seattle Kraken who go on to the conference finals but are dusted by the St. Louis Blues in five games. The abilities continue to present themselves more so on the Capitals but still a decent looking team here in Seattle. Great seasons for both squadrons. The Capitals finished second in the league with 107, whereas the Kraken got 106 and would finish fourth. Not a great season individually for Jabroni 1, who only had 45 points and was a dash 17. But what a year for JBT, who now has all the bragging rights, a Conn Smythe and a Stanley Cup. And that will do it for both of their careers. So although they started completely identical in terms of abilities, player type, you name it, there was no difference. Their careers certainly did not mimic each other. JBO did not even reach 1,000 points. He also played less games. That first season in the AHL probably contributes to that. But also I feel like there was some injuries in there. However, they did seem to get injured at the same time. It's pretty odd. So there you go. I took two identical players, threw them into franchise mode, and they got drafted the same year. We got to see how different their career paths were, how different their achievements were, so on and so forth. And I found that to be pretty interesting, but not really surprising. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to leave a like if you did. I appreciate you, and I will see you soon.